Hey there, Posture Guys and Gals, and welcome back to the show. As always, I'm your host, Justin Archer, aka The Posture Guy, your number one source on pain, posture, and performance. Coming to you live today from, well, the living room floor. I know, it's exciting, right? Good pattern and everything. I just vacuumed. Um, <laughs> anyways, though, today we're going to be talking about foot and ankle biomechanics and how they relate to your pain, or pains if you have more than one, uh, posture and or performance. So if you have certain symptoms like bunions, hammer toe, um, general foot pain, heel pain, plantar fasciitis, any of those things, or any foot faults that you've noticed, for example, like eversion where the foot turns out, uh, pronation, supination, flexion, extension, any of these things um, that you've been told or maybe you've been given a, an orthotic or some insert in your shoe to help with the position of your foot. You don't quite like them. Maybe they're not all that comfortable. You're definitely going to want to stick around because we're going to go through all that in today's video. All right. But before we get to all that, uh, I just have a little bit of house cleaning and announcements to make. So first, the house cleaning. Uh, earlier this week, I put out a post titled, I want to make this for you and with you, and it was a real big hit. Inside, there's a three-question survey. I've already got a number of responses, all of which were really helpful for all those that sent, you, sent that in. Thank you very, very much. I know I've already replied to each of you individually. Um, and if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you check it out. I'll link to it down below. And if you could be so kind as to fill out those three questions, uh, you know, they're, they're just three questions that shouldn't take too long, um, I would really appreciate it because your input um, is going to go into uh, what's going to be included inside the final course. And if you don't know what the course I'm referring to is, just check out the post below and you'll figure it out, all right? Um, so that takes care of the house cleaning. Uh, the announcement, uh, in case you didn't see uh, Saturday's email that I sent out, um, because I'm so excited about this course that I'm creating for you and with you now, um, as well as Anya and I are pretty stoked. We just booked our tickets to go back to Europe. You know, I'm just really, really excited, really energetic. Um, I, as fate would have it, had three spots open up on my schedule, two Skype, one online, and I sent out an email saying I'm going to be offering some bonuses with these three spots. And the deal is good till the end of the month, the 31st. Um, and basically it's a complimentary Skype session, so it's a $250 value. And then also to kind of, uh, for all of those, especially that love travel, like, like us, right? Um, I'm also going to be including a 60 or even, let's say, 90 minute uh, phone or Skype session with me where I'm going to share with you all of our travel hacking tips and tricks um, and, and basically teach you how we travel for, well, probably less than you had lunch today um, or maybe a nice dinner. I kid you not, we are flying from uh, Bellingham, Washington to Gdansk, Poland for $98. That's flight, tax, surcharges, bags, everything. Uh, we, got, we flew from Dallas, Texas to, uh, well here, Vancouver, BC for $5. Again, that's both of us. And we stayed in Prague, a nice two bedroom, one bath apartment, right in the center of Prague, perfect location, walking distance to anything you do, uh, everything you want to do uh, for, it was $90 for five days. So those are just some examples, some of the deals. So if you really love to travel, or you want to travel and you want to find that stuff out, um, if you've been thinking about doing it other than on either of the Skype or online therapy programs, uh, this is probably the time to do it. Um, and an update, one of those sessions, uh, one of those spots has been filled, so now it's down to one Skype and one online. Uh, so again, if you're being kind of on the fence, don't wait too long because I can't hold the spots really for anybody. It's on a first come, first serve basis. If you want to find out more about the details about uh, the bonuses and what's, what's included, um, I put a link down below to the original email that I sent out on Saturday, and you can check that out. All right, so that takes care of the house cleaning announcements. Now let's get to what I know you're all here for, which is you know learning about the foot and ankle biomechanics and how it relates to everything else in the body. All right. So first of all, you know we're not we're going to try to keep this simple, all about the form and function of the foot and ankle and how it relates to the rest of the body. We're not going to be going over every joint, every muscle, tendon, ligament, the names of them, connections, origin, and all that. You know a little bit more detailed. You can kind of get Google happy with that later on your own. Um, but, you know, I would say before we even get to the biomechanics and maybe some exercise you can do, stretches, strength and exercises, and all that, you know, I think it would be good to touch on, 
you know, first of all, what state are most people's feet in, and what are we subjecting them to on a daily basis? And by that, I mean, you know, how is our footwear? And most people's footwear, you know, it's, it's, it's thick, it's clunky, it's over-engineered, right? All these, all these uh, athletic shoes and running shoes now have arch support or stabilization, heel stabilization or keeps you from pronating, supinating. I think I already said arch support. Uh, they got little springy things on the bottom. They've got a, a swoopy thing that makes, or like a rocker, you know, like the shoes are rocking, sharing all this stuff. And honestly, the only thing I have to say about that is, you know, it, it, it's all just, you know, gimmicky marketing hype. Honestly, it is. I won't get too much into it. Um, but if you want to know more about that, my view on that, call me, email me, um, and, and we can talk more about that. Um, really, I always recommend people, the less shoe, the better. Now, I'm not going to say the shoe is the only thing. you got to bring a proper line body to the shoe. So sometimes if you heard people who they've gotten into a minimalistic uh, shoe like this, and then they say, oh, well, my foot hurts. Well, if you've gone from a normal shoe, like a, like a tennis shoe or a dress shoe, to something like this overnight, that's like saying, I've never worked out, but tomorrow I'm going to go do two or 300 push-ups and like 500 squats and everything. I'm sure if someone held a gun to your head, you could force yourself to do it, but how are you going to feel the next day and the day after that? You're going to barely be able to move. You're going to hurt. Well, same thing is a lot of the modern day athletic shoes and dress shoes and just footwear in general has caused our foot, its natural design, to just really atrophy, right? And now it's, it's no longer a fully functional foot. And that affects the rest of your body up the kinetic chain towards your ankle, towards your lower leg, towards your knee, your thigh and hip, your spine, your upper back, your shoulders, all of that. So we need to get into something that more mimics the natural design of our shoe, of, of our foot, excuse me. So what am I talking about? What does that look like, feel like, and everything? Well, this is a, a perfect example of a minimalistic footwear. Now, this may be going kind of one extreme side of it. I know not everybody can wear something like this to work. If you can, work in an awesome place. Um, but really, again, the less shoe, the better. You can't get any less than this. There's no support. There's basically enough protection. I believe it's uh, about three millimeters between your foot and the ground. And to the chairman position. Um, and really, this is enough to protect your foot from if you were to step on some glass, um, some hot asphalt, things like that. Other than that, it really allows your foot to function like it was originally designed, which is perfect. You know, And this is my wife's, so obviously it's <laughs> too small for me. Um, but I have a, a few pair of these. And you know, when I wear them, people say, well, what supports your arch? I said, okay, crazy idea. My arch supports my arch. That's what it's meant to do, you know? And if it isn't, okay, we need to look, find out, well, why isn't that arch functioning properly? Maybe it's something in your hip and upper leg. Maybe it's something in your lower leg. Maybe it's due to your footwork. Maybe it's a little combination of all of the above, all right? But your arch should be able to support your arch. And the reason you want less shoe as well is you have these things in your foot called proprioceptors, and they're sensors that every time you step, every time you make contact with the ground, they send feedback through your central nervous system to your brain, and then your brain tells the rest of your body how to adjust. Do you pronate your foot a little bit? Should you supinate? Should you shift your weight forward, back? And the thicker the sole you get, and the further, especially your heel, comes away from the ground and above your, the toe box area, the more those proprioceptors are are deadened, right? It's kind of like having bad cell phone reception. You're like, what, what? Well, <laughs> your central nervous system, your brain, the rest of your body going, huh? I don't, what am I supposed to do? Because the proprioceptors aren't given the chance to interact with the ground, okay? Something like this allows for that. Now, again, you don't have to get something that has separate toes and is a bright color. They, uh, you know, now there's plenty of molestic uh, footwear out there with toes and clothes that look like normal shoes. Um, I'll put up a few links to down below. Uh, some of my favorite places to go looking for those is birthdayshoes.com. I believe the guy who writes that is Justin Owens. And then Katie Bauman from, uh, at katiesays.com. She has a good list of some summer and winter minimalistic footwear, which again, I'll link to down below. So make sure to check those out. Um, and then of course, if you do get something like this, like a toe shoe, you're gonna need toe socks. And actually, even if you have one that where the toes are enclosed, you can still wear these toe socks, and they will help to start spread your toes a bit. Now, why is that important? Well, in most shoes, 
you'll notice that the toe is narrow, it's tapered, right? And that smushes all the toes together. Well, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that if that's on the ground, it's not going to have as much balance and stability as that, right? I mean, if you if think about it, what's more sturdy for you to stand wide-legged or to stand with your feet together? It's harder to balance with your feet together, right? So you want the toes spread. And again, most shoes, especially high heels, certain men's dress shoes, you know, that are really pointed, it smushes all the toes together. These will help start separating them so they can function independently of one another, all right? Now, if you want to kind of take it up to the next level, we just got these, been wearing them for a few days now, and I really like them actually. They're called Happy Feet, and they're socks that have these little wedges at the end, and they help spread your toes. So they stretch the adductors, the adductors, the muscles in between the toes, right? And they help spread them. And you can wear these like just kind of while you're lounging around and everything. You can walk them a little bit. They're really comfortable. They keep your foot warm, obviously with the exception of your toes. Um, but and they, they feel really good. So that's a way too you can start to spread your toes. And that's beneficial not only for your toes and performance for the feet to be wide, but that can actually feed some slack into your plantar fascia. So if you're having a type of plantar fasciitis or anything, any heel pain, again, it's going to feed slack to your entire system, your foot, your ankle, uh, your, your lower leg, your shin, and it can actually change really your, your overall posture. Again, and need, need, none of these things by themselves, I think, are like the magic bullet, but again, total health is cumulative, same as posture. So add it up, they're going to make a difference, okay? Um, now, one more thing is that a lot of shoes, uh, again, the typical shoe that most people wear, you know, I keep telling people, we got to get out of heels. And I'm not just speaking to my posture gals, I'm speaking to the posture guys too, is, you know, everybody thinks when I say, when you, you hear heels, you think, you know, uh, like a stiletto or a high heel. Well, obviously that's a heel, but I'm talking even athletic shoes, like men's athletic shoes, if you put your finger here, right, and touch the heel, and then push on the shoe here, and you'll notice, oh my gosh, the heel is up here, and where my feet rest is here. Dude, you are wearing a heel. <laughs> don't, don't kid yourself, you're wearing heels. And that's fine, I'm not here to judge. Guys could wear heels. Guys do wear heels, as well as, well as do women. But here's what happens when you wear heels, okay? I know they make your butt look good, and that's great, but if you follow some of the exercise recommendations, your butt will look good without them, I guarantee you. Keep the designer jeans, it'll all work out. Um, all right, so imagine this chair is your body, right? Well, now imagine the front legs are where your toes are, or the balls of your feet, and the back legs are your heel. Well, imagine if you're just wearing, say, an athletic shoe with a little bit of a lift. Well, see what just happened there? The chair shifted forward, okay? Now imagine you're wearing something with that's really over-engineered, has you know heel uh, stability and keeps you from proning and everything. Those are usually a little bit more heel. Now let's say it's even one of those shoes with like the shocks or the the, the little rocker thing or something. Okay, now you're here. All right. Now you're wearing a you know women like a low heel, like a wedge. Okay. Now like a three or four inch. Now a five inch, a stiletto. You know, obviously you get the point here. The more heel, the higher your heel is off the ground, the more material you have in between your heel and the ground, the more forward it's going to shift your body. Now granted, I understand and you're probably thinking, yeah, but I'm not a chair. You know, my body is, is it could bend and move and everything. The chair is solid. And you're absolutely right. But what happens is that that movement has to come from somewhere to keep you upright so you don't fall forward on your face, right? Because you would be like this and then all of a sudden, uh-oh. <laughs> So that's going to come, get over the chair, um, that's going to come from the bones and joints, not the bones, excuse me, unless you break them, but the joints in your foot, in your ankle, in your uh, knee, in your hip. It's going to change the curvature of your spine, which is then going to change your shoulder girdle position, your neck, your head, all of that, all right? So again, we got to get your heels on the ground. And that's why something like this, and again, it doesn't have to be a toe shoe, but something with a neutral heel, where the heel is set even with the toes and the balls of the feet, is good. And 
Some people even benefit from a negative heel. Now, I'm not talking something where you're like this, but maybe where the heel is just a millimeter or two below. And what that's going to do is shift your center of gravity, i.e. your hips, back underneath of you. So if you're wearing a heel, and excuse me, since I'm not standing up to show you this, but uh, I got the camera on a tripod. So if you're on heels, it's going to shift your weight forward like this, right? And then so you don't fall forward on your face, what, what you do is you arch back to keep some semblance of balance. Well, the problem here is obviously now I'm turning my lower back into an accordion, and ouch, that hurts, and I have lower back pain, now maybe side pain, degenerative disc disease, and all these various symptoms that could arise, right? As well as I'm shifting the head of my femurs towards the front of their sockets, and now all of a sudden oh, I also have hip pain and hip impingement when I try to sit down or squat. Again, the list of symptoms goes on and on. But if I wear, instead of wearing something with a heel, now I have something with a neutral heel or a slightly negative heel, now that sits my hips back and I can be more upright, okay? Perfect example of this is if you've ever tried the gravity drop exercise where basically you stand on the stairs with your uh, feet pointing straight ahead and you let your heels drop. Now again, that's an extreme, that's like this angle. But what happens, whatever you're holding on to, if you let go, you'll start to fall backwards, right? It shifts your, your, the weight of you back. Well again, let's not go that extreme, but let's just take it like that. Okay, now your hips are gonna be underneath of you, meaning above your knees and ankles and below your shoulders and head. So now everything is vertically in alignment and you can stand upright without having to fight your own body's mechanics because you're putting your foot in and on something of a platform like that. Make sense? Cool. Now, before we get to all the you know, biomechanics and some exercise stuff you can do, I got one more gadget I wanna show you. This is something I have over the last month really enjoy it. It's the spook mat. You've heard me talk about it before. It's basically an acupressure mat. And one of my favorite things to do now is after I have my bulletproof coffee, I turn on my computer, check email, start getting to work, and I'll stand on this barefoot for about five or 10 minutes. And granted, uh, you know, you might look at, ouch, that's gotta hurt, right? There's little pricklies there and stuff. You know, put some socks on, and, but after the first few days, you'll realize, I can do this barefoot because you'll get used to it and it feels really good. If you ever uh, walked on stones barefoot, and you kind of find those parts on your foot that feel tender and you can almost give your, uh, yourself a foot massage by standing them up at the right angle. This is like that, it's awesome. Um, okay, so we got that covered. I'm gonna stand up, show you some stuff about foot mechanics and how you know basically everything works together as a unit. Um, excuse me, I'm gonna go out of frame here or at least the top portion of me, and this is just so you can see the feet and legs. So, don't mind the ashy knees and the carpet print. <laughs> but anyways, when you're standing, your feet should be approximately six inches apart, so it's about, you know, fist width, right there, okay? And they should be pointed straight ahead. Now, by straight ahead, make sure you can see my feet there, there we go. By straight ahead, most people would look at this and go, well, just in your pigeon toe. Now, first of all, I've never seen a pigeon stand like this. I mean, I. When I start evaluating pigeons' postures, I know I've been working too much on any vacation. Um, but this is what they, you know, what they would call pigeon toes, feet turned in. Well, that is pigeon toe. This is actually feet straight ahead. The reason people say this is pigeon toe is because most people stand with their feet out like this. So relative to this, that is pigeon toe. But in fact, this is actually really straight. Now, the reason most people think it's pigeon toe is because they're looking at this line and they go, well, this is pointed in. And you'd, you'd be absolutely correct. I don't want you to use this line because it's not a true line. It's like trying to draw a straight line with a wet noodle, okay? It just doesn't work. This line changes from the morning to the middle of the day to the evening, depending on how much you've been sitting or walking, all that. The line you want to use is this line out here. Excuse me, chair. And I'll show it to you from here. Basically, the back portion of your foot. This line here, before it starts going to that curve towards your pinky toe, this will not change unless your foot was ran over by basically a steamroller, in which case you have bigger problems and should turn off this video and go to the emergency hospital. Um, but this sh will stay straight. So use that as your, as your ruler. Another one to look at is between your second and third toe. So imagine lasers were coming out of there and they should make a straight line, okay? So that's feet straight, six inches apart. Now, a lot of people will go, yeah, you know, I heard you about the shoes and everything, but I need arch support. And I'm gonna argue that, no, you don't. 
What you need is for your hips to work properly. So I'm purposely kind of pushing my arches into the, the floor right now to show you no arch. Now watch what happens when I screw my feet into the ground. So imagine like there's a big screw here and I'm gonna turn out, watch my feet. Now you see what happened there? I'll do it again and again. So as I turn, let's just, just watch the left one for a second. As I turn this knee out, right, by contracting the muscles in my, in my buttocks, as I turn it out, my arch raises. Now I'll do it with just the right one, okay? Now I'll do both. So you can actually create an arch by screwing your feet into the ground, and that's by having your glutes, your butt muscles, functioning properly. So what you have to understand is your foot is the tire. It's what applies the power to the ground. Your ankle is kind of the suspension, right? And the knee is the transmission, the hip is the motor. Now, if you're into cars, those analogies slash metaphors probably <laughs> made sense to you. If you're not, let me put it this way. Your hip, knee, ankle, foot, it's a kinetic chain. It's a unit that should work together. And if either one of those, if there's a disconnect in any part of that linkage, you're gonna have problems in your foot, whether it be symptoms like bunions, hammer toes, plantar fasciitis, um, heel spurs, any of that stuff, or where they just be overpronating, supinating, you know, being feet averted, like duck footed, things like that. So you want to make sure that your hip, knee, ankle, and foot are working together properly. And what I've done is I put together an exercise routine down below. It's four exercises, foot circles and point flexes, supine calf and hamstring stretch, elevated child's pose with pressure glide, and air bench, okay? So what those four exercises will do is help reconnect the kinetic chain between your hip, knee, and ankle so that your hips, knees, and ankles are all pointed straight ahead. And when you walk, run, or you know, do whatever activity, they're all on the same path. They're all gonna be having the same end goal. And so that way there's not gonna be mix up, there's not gonna be rotation or torque in the knee or the foot or anything. And everything is going to work properly and feel good, okay? So make sure to check those out. Now, if you notice your feet or your toes are really scrunched up, another one I would recommend adding to it is the plantar fascia stretch. I'll link to that one uh, down below as well. Basically, it's putting your hand, your fingers in between your toes. And I warn you, the first time you do this, if you've never done it, can be pretty uncomfortable. So go with it gently and slowly. Um, and you basically rotate your ankle. And just like the name suggests, it helps stretch the plantar fascia, but it also helps stretch the adductors, the muscles, uh, in between the toes that basically bring them together, okay? And last but certainly not least is don't forget, don't neglect the upper body. Because a lot of times I've found people where, yes, they have a disconnect in that hip, knee, ankle, and they've done, say, some of the exercises like I'm suggesting you do, but they find, yeah, it works, but then it comes back. And realize, well, the reason they have that disconnect in their hip, knee, and ankle is because there's an imbalance in their upper body. One gentleman comes to mind whose left foot would hurt him after about a minute, minute and a half of standing. It first got kind of tingly, then burning, then numbing, and he just had to sit down. And so he couldn't obviously walk or stand very much. And when he came in to see me and I shook his hand, I immediately noticed his right shoulder was about an inch, inch and a half lower than his left. So he was like this, and he was talking about his foot, talking about his foot, and I had him stand, he said it hurt, you know, after about a minute or so. I had him sit down for a while to rest. He stood back up, but I said, this time, put your hands on your head and pull your elbows back. And he did that, and we waited a minute, and I said, well, how does it feel like this? It's not hurting. Kept waiting, kept waiting, and it wasn't really until about eight or ten minutes of standing and walking around that he said, it's now just starting to hurt, but it's hurting way, way less than it usually does. And I said, okay, so that's our hint for him, as well as this may be the case for you, that your upper body is the reason that there's a disconnect in your in your hips, that there may be a disconnect in your knees, that there may be a disconnect in your ankles, and then that's why you're having a symptom in your foot slash ankle. You know, things like bunions, hammer toes, plantar fasciitis, yada, yada, yada. Um, or your foot's everting or supinating, and that's why you're having ankles, or that's difficult to run more than half a mile or a mile without pain. So you gotta remember, the body works together as a unit. So if you notice that you have some imbalance, one shoulder higher than the other, your shoulders around forward, um, you know, definitely check, uh, you know, you can do that test too. And if you're not sure, try it anyway. Stand up, notice how the weight is in your feet. If you have any symptoms, notice how they are. And then put your hands behind your head, pull your elbows back, and ask yourself the same questions. How is my weight left to right, front to back, like toes to heels, inside to outside? 
Try walking without the hands on the head, then try walking with the hands on the head. If the hands on the head feel better, that probably means that you have some type of imbalance in your upper back and shoulders that's causing the imbalance you feel in the feet and or the symptoms you feel. In that case, what you should do is at the end of this video, there's going to be a spot where you can sign up, right? It'll be a little text box right about here and sign up. And when you sign up, you're going to get access to 16 uh, exercise routines complete with video tutorials that'll show you step-by-step -step exercises how to uh, correct various, uh, uh, how to treat various symptoms like back pain, shoulder pain, knee pain, etc., etc. You're going to want to do the ones for either upper back pain or shoulder pain because that will help correct any imbalances up here. And if that's the reason why your foot hurts, then your foot, just like the gentleman I was describing, uh, like his foot felt better, so will yours. Okay? Uh, if you have any questions about anything that I went over in here, because I know we covered a lot, uh, please don't hesitate to call or email me. Facebook, tweet, messenger bird, smoke signal, uh, <laughs> or my favorite, just leave a comment in the section, leave a comment in the comment section below, right? It goes without saying, but I, I'll say it. Uh, you know, that way everybody can chime in and we can all learn from one another. All right? Anyways, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you inside the next video. Until then, take care and keep moving.